Hey class, Brandon here, and we're going to talk about narrative preaching. Now you might be saying, narrative preaching? What, what is that? Well, <laughs> it's a big part of this class. There are different forms of narrative preaching, and they all involve stories. Have you ever thought about how much of your life is defined by story? First of all, somebody might ask you to uh, talk about yourself, kind of like our introduction in this class. You share the story of your life. You don't just give some things. Well, I like to read. I like to eat Chinese food. I like this. No, th there's no context. It doesn't fit any way. Our brains are programmed to operate through story. And so we use story all the time. We, we love movies and television shows and books and all kinds of things that have stories attached to them. Even, even how-to manuals will sometimes tell a story as to how you do something. Similar to Andy Stanley's book, Communicating for a Change, in this class, it begins with a parable, a story, in which Stanley works out the way that uh, his preaching style works. And it's very effective. Now, there are some who say that, hey, narrative preaching is not a biblical model. Well, that's just not true. And if you need some convincing, I want to take you to Luke chapter 15, where Jesus very effectively uses a narrative preaching style. The uh, I'm, I'm just going to start in verse 1. It says, Now the tax collectors and sinners... We're all gathering around to hear him, him being Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. And actually what happens is Jesus tells three parables, three stories, right in a row. The first one is about a lost sheep. The second one is about a lost coin. And the third one is about a lost son. But in the third story, Jesus takes it a little bit further. In the first two, we've got a shepherd who is celebrating finding his lost sheep. And in the second one, we've got a woman who finds her lost coin, and she's celebrating, asking everybody to celebrate with her. But in the third story, we've got a lost son. And the father runs out to meet him when he comes home, and he throws this huge celebration. But when the celebration is taking place, his other son refuses to celebrate. And the father goes out to meet him and says, why can't you celebrate with me? They're coming home. Your son's coming home. My, my son's coming home. Your brother's coming home. Why can't you celebrate with me? And then there's a series of questions that are, linger in the air. Why didn't the older son act like the shepherd and go looking for the sheep? Why didn't he go looking for the lost coin that was his brother? No, nobody goes to look for the lost son until the son comes back. And instead of celebrating him coming back, he begrudges it. And then he winds up being separated from his father as well. And we're left wondering, what's the resolution? Jesus is saying this in the presence of these Pharisees who are angry because Jesus is celebrating being connected with those who were once far off. This series of stories is actually a sermon, a narrative sermon. And it's beautifully told. These stories, which can be preached individually, but are magnificently woven together by Jesus to bring a power punch to these individuals. This is narrative preaching at its best, as it should be, because Jesus is the master preacher. So, narrative preaching obviously has a purpose and a point. Jesus used it frequently. Uh, go study the story of the Good Samaritan and the, the whole setting around it. It's another powerful narrative sermon where Jesus just, boom, brings it. Well, we can do the same thing. 
Narrative preaching can be uh, a series of biblical stories used together to bring about a point. It can be a series of stories from real life, everyday life, our life, that bring about the biblical truth of a specific scripture or passage. It can be a little bit of both. It can also be the telling of a biblical story and just allowing the drama of the text to come to life. We're going to talk about that in first-person narrative preaching in uh, a future week. There's a way of telling stories so that the stories line up and they give details that form a plot that the series of stories form a plot. That's kind of what Jesus did here. Eugene Lowry has that method we're going to talk about in, in the future called the homiletical plot. That's a form of narrative preaching. Inductive preaching is by nature, uh, because we're asking questions, there needs to be a context to those questions, and narrative often is the best context for inquiry for a question. So what we're studying, narrative preaching, is really about utilizing story of Scripture, of Jesus' life, of, of the life of those in the Bible, of our life today, of the struggles of everyday man and, and woman, and our, our struggle to connect with God, and then answering the natural questions that come out of that. It's a powerful way to preach, and it's highly relational. Learning to preach this way, even if you're using a deductive method where you're, you're just saying, this, this is the way it is, this is what the Bible says, this will enhance your illustrations in that method. So there's great, there's great strength in studying this method. I hope that you'll dig in to, the, to narrative methodologies in preaching. Uh, look forward to hearing the discussion uh, on our on our discussion feed this week take care